Felix here, and there are three really, really important things you need to understand on this Monday morning because they are going to decide which way the market swings. And I apologize, I'm swirling through Seoul in South Korea here, so it might be a little noisy. But I wanted to get this across to you because I think it's very, very important. Number one is jobs data out on Friday, right? What does it mean? Apparently, if you believe in the Biden government, and this is not Democrat bashing, this is just government bashing, they claimed they created 600,000 jobs. Now, of course, that isn't actually true. They created 600,000 part-time jobs while destroying about 6,000 full-time jobs. Now, this is the first set of data that came out. This data will get revised down in a month and then possibly again in the month after. So it'll come in probably as... 400,000 part-time jobs and something like 50,000 full-time jobs lost. So in reality, this is not what the market initially thought it was going to be, as in the economy is booming, therefore rates will stay higher for longer. And the Fed knows this. They're onto this. So the interest rate story that you're reading in the newspapers is written either by idiots or by people who want you to believe something that's just utter nonsense. And that street was a little steeper than I thought. <laughs> um, so what does it mean? The Fed is still going to cut interest rates. And yes, there is noise out that they won't, but they will. And I'll tell you why. You have the commercial real estate crisis, number one. You have number two, the banking crisis that's connected to it. And number three, the US government is creating so much debt that interest is going to be the biggest position of bigger than the defense budget, bigger than social security and everything else. How do you fix those three problems? Very simple, you cut interest rates. So rates are gonna come down, they have to come down, there really is no debate about it. This is just short-term noise. Certain people wanna get elected and certain Fed presidents want to get into the newspaper. You know, a lot of people like fame. So don't believe the noise and the hype. That will be my first thing to say. Now, how does that affect the market? Well. Two really important things that you need to add on top of that. And honestly, the most important thing that you could ever do to improve your wealth creation, the performance of your portfolio, is to put more money into it. And I know that's like a sucky thing to hear, nobody wants to hear it, but unless you add an extra income stream, it's just, it's gonna be hard work. How do you add an extra income stream? So what I do is I trade, we're up something like, I don't know, $5,000 this year on a $30,000 portfolio that I'm trading with publicly for the community. And I'm going to teach that exact step, that exact process that I use to about 500 people tomorrow live, Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. If you want to join me, head over to phoenixfranc.org slash webinar and grab yourself a free seat. And you will literally get away with my entire stra strategy, my entire structure and everything else. So take advantage of that. Now, the second major point here is hedge funds. Hedge funds have, for the last four days, been shorting the market very significantly. And they have now been shorting the market for the last eight weeks running. So occasionally they have days where they go a little longer, the last almost five days ago, but we've now had eight weeks in a row of net shorts. And that just means those guys just don't believe the story they think we are going to hit our head and they think we're going to come down. What does that mean? A little bit more caution. That's the way I would look at that. Like, I'd just be a little bit more cautious. I, and, and if you're a really long-term investor, wait for the dip. Take advantage of the dip. Because we are going to get lower rates. We already have lots of money printing from the government. So the support system for this rally to continue is there, continue to be there. And I still think being invested is a gazillion times better than not being invested, although perhaps trading might be an even better outcome. So that's uh, numero do. Now, number three is as follows, blackouts. What does that mean? So when we go into earnings season, which is where we're going right now, then do you want to see some cherry blossoms? This is a big, big thing here. See that there behind me? You see those trees? That's what everyone's very excited about. They are very beautiful. The... Blackout period means companies are not permitted to buy back their own shares a certain period before earnings and a certain period well, during and after. And 
that means as all the major companies are about to start reporting, like we're kicking off with the big banks at the end of the week, you will not have them buying shares. And the biggest buyers of shares around are actually companies buying their own shares. And that, of course, supports the share price of those shares and, and, the, and, the, and the index and the market overall. So we're going into a little bit of a period of weakness. Now, glorious earnings reports will outdo that. And everybody will still think, brilliant, let's buy some more. But there is a risk here that if earnings come in a little bit softer, that, well, you just haven't got the support level that we have, right? And then, last but not least, CTAs, the algorithm funds, the funds that buy on the basis of technical indicators, basically dumb computers that chase the market, they are neutral as long as the market is flat or it goes up. They don't really do anything. But if the market goes down significantly, then, oh boy, do they sell. Because they have been buying for months and months and months, and they are therefore very, very strongly exposed to the market. So that's a risk factor there as well. So just the way I look at it, it's like, there is a better way, I think, to gain exposure right now than to buy shares, unless you have a very long-term horizon, in which case it doesn't really matter. But for a shorter-term horizon, I would just, and this is what, not just I'm saying it, Goldman's are saying as all the guys are saying it, there's a saying, from the positions, buy a couple of call options. If the market rallies, you make the same amount of money. If it doesn't, you only have a tiny amount of risk on, which is a much, much better place to be. So come and learn that with me. That's really what I would say to you uh, on, on Tuesday evening. And it's, it's going to change the way you look at the market ultimately. And what's the beauty of having a different outlook on the market? Well, you can stroll around Korea because you were on a whim going here and you planned it five days ago and you're seeing some friends and you're having a nice time. And then next week, I'm off to a tropical island. About three weeks after that, I'm off to my place in France and, and then in London. And you can just go wherever you want. And I remember a time when, when I couldn't, when I had to, you know, beg and plead for time off. And I only had so many days in a year. And if I did this trip, I couldn't do the next trip I wanted to do. Plus, I didn't have enough money to do the trips. So that can change once you get financial freedom. And that's really why I would make that your focus. Like, that is the most important thing. And I had a chat message me on Twitter yesterday. And what he wrote was something like, don't teach your children to be wealthy. Teach them to be happy. And I thought this is probably one of the worst quotes in the world because they're not going to be happy unless they are pretty rich. And you might disagree with that, but I've been in play a place where I didn't have enough money and God, was I miserable. Can you be miserable if you're rich? Yes, of course you can. Lots of them are. But it is so much easier to be happy when you don't have to worry about paying the bills and paying the mortgage and... You can just be like, let's hop on a flight, let's go somewhere I wanted to go to, eat whatever we want to eat, chill. We want to stay an extra week or an extra couple of days, it doesn't bloody matter. Like, everything is an option, right? And, and that's really what changes life. Like, I checked into here on, on Friday into, I shan't name the hotel, but a very well-known international <laughs> hotel chain, a five-star hotel, and it was really noisy. So I was like, we're going to change hotels. So I... I WhatsApp my travel agent and, and, you know, the alternative was Four Seasons and somewhere else. And it doesn't matter what it costs. It just doesn't matter because I just want to be comfortable. And actually the hotel I'm staying were very, very nice and moved me and upgraded us to a much nicer suite. So, and it all seems spoiled and it seems irrelevant and it seems like, oh, but that's not really what life's all about. But you know what? Comfort, exploring places, meeting people not worrying about stuff, not worrying do you have enough money, not worrying about your credit card balance, not worrying about paying the mortgage or your tax bill or any of that. That's really what makes life great. So this, this whole idea that money doesn't matter and we should focus on something else. And, you know, I, I'd like to think I'm a creative person. I love to paint and things like that. And yeah, those things make me happy, but I wouldn't have the time to do it. And in fact, I know a lot of great artists and they haven't got the money to buy the bloody equipment. 
you know, it's, it's money ultimately is the tool that allows you to live the life you're meant to live and to fulfill your potential, make the impact you want to make and actually help other people and impact other people. And for me, the most rewarding thing I've ever done is, is this, as bizarre as it is me strolling around Seoul here and sharing some thoughts with you that I hope might be helpful. When you can help someone and they message you back and say how tremendously it has changed their life, that's satisfaction. And in my case, that's helping people get to financial freedom. And I know the impact it makes on them because I've been in their shoes. And I can now see people who have followed some of what we teach and, and, and are like, wow, life's different, life is better. And I will continue to do that until we, uh, well, as long as we make that impact and as long as people are happy about it, as long as people are getting those, those results. And, and I guess I also just want to say thank you. Thanks, guys, for your support, for building this community, for tuning into these um, videos and for smashing the various buttons. And those little things are what is allowing us to build a bigger, lasting community here and help not you know, thousands, but hundreds of thousands and hopefully millions of people live the life that they want to live, whatever that might look like. And uh, I'll leave you with that thought. I'll be back live again tomorrow and I wish you a glorious day. Any questions you have, pop them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care. Winston and Felix here. And Winston just said to me, Felix, it's almost April. What stocks are we buying in April? And I thought, Winston, that's a genius idea. 